So my friends, AMD released a whole bunch of information yesterday about how they are going to be overtaking the data center area of computing, which does have a lot of implications for what it's going to mean for us as consumers down the line. So I wanna take a look at everything they unveiled yesterday and just kind of walk through what it's going to mean for gamers and general compute folk as well. So that's that's the idea behind this video. Before we dive into all of the topic, this video is brought to you by our limited edition merch shirt. It's the It Just Works shirt. You got a GPU that's failing on you? It just works. You are afraid that AMD is gonna overtake Nvidia and market share? It just works. You want Intel to come in and decimate the field with their new brand GPUs? It just works. My friends, if you're wallowing in student debt, it just works. If you've got, a, you know, an unkempt room, it just works. If your mom won't get off your back for all of those Cokes you're drinking, it just works. My friends, pick up an It Just Works shirt. Check them out, link in the video description. 12 days only until November 19th and then they're gone. You can't be a part of It Just Working. So before we can talk about AMD, we're gonna talk about what Intel talked about a few days ago, which was they launched 48 core CPUs as well as 12 channel memory per socket setups, which I mean, how are they even gonna cool this? They'll probably have to like take it down to Antarctica and then use LN2 on it to give you a proper cooling system with all of this based on their Computex demonstration. But in all seriousness, it looks like these cascade laid CPUs are just basically two current Xeons glued together to make a lot of cores. And so that was their attempt, Intel's attempt yesterday to try to show up what AMD was gonna announce today, but fear at not, fear not, fret not, that Intel is actually going to have another architecture event on December 11th to hopefully give us, assuage our fears a bit more. This is obviously being announced today after AMD had their press conference because Intel can't let AMD into the spotlight for even a second because they got things like this. This is a Zen 2 Epic Rome CPU with 64 cores. You see eight little chiplets around this giant die in the middle, which is going to allow for Infinity Fabric 2 to get better crosstalk between the cores to make it faster and better than it currently was. What this will mean for gamers is that we could potentially see on the next generation rise Ryzen 3 third gen is I think what we'll call it, Ryzen 3800X. We could potentially see up to 16 cores combined together in a way that's much faster than the current CPUs that we have from the Ryzen 7 2700X. This is all thanks to the fact that they're going on seven nanometers, so they're able to make the cores significantly smaller than the current 12 nanometers of Zen Plus, and that means that we could potentially see 16 cores. Obviously, a whole bunch of cores doesn't mean anything if they're not fast. So let's take a look at what we're trying to see with what Zen 2 is gonna bring to the table. So based on the IPC uplift from Zen to Zen Plus. We only got about 3% performance increase from the Ryzen 1700X to the Ryzen 2700X. However, based on everything AMD revealed yesterday, we could expect double digit percentage IPC gains with Zen 2. So we could see that core for core going four gigahertz on a 26 or a 3600X versus a 2600X, we could see up to 10 to 15% increased performance. And then we could potentially see more cores as well based on that. There is some discussion that I've seen out there where people are saying that we could see up to five gigahertz boost on the Zen 2 cores, or we could potentially see uh, about 4.5 to 4.6 gigahertz on all cores boosting on the next gen, let's call it a Ryzen 7 3800X, which five gigahertz on 16 cores with a lot more IPC definitely makes Intel look a little obsolete at this point, even with the 9900K, because if you can have 16 cores running everything that you need, and it's faster than the competition, especially when Intel's struggling with 10 nanometers, this could be the year of AMD coming out in 2019. One of the biggest things to take away from AMD's event was the fact that they're not only just going to release Zen 2 as predicted and as promised by them on time, unlike a certain Team Blue, they're also on track for Zen 3, as well as talking about Zen 4 even though they didn't give us details on what that's gonna be. Is that gonna still be seven nanometers? Is it gonna be five nanometers? Is it gonna be based on a new technology that we don't even know about because aliens haven't given it to us yet? It's not clear. Zen 4, if it comes from people from Zebuli Reticula, I'm totally okay down with the alien mega death CPUs. 
So the biggest thing to take away is that Zen 2 is going to be a decent performance increase, not only because it's on seven nanometers, so they're actually going to be able to deliver the same performance at 50% less power. They're actually also redesigning how Zen works by giving some Zen 2 goodness love architectural improvements to that. So be excited for the Ryzen 3 series because it looks like AMD is not ready to disappoint us just yet. That should be coming in the near future with their GPU side of things. So let's talk about that because they also unveiled the world's first seven nanometer GPU if we're talking about desktop GPU. And it's also the world's first PCI Express 4.0 GPU. And it's also the world's first infinity fabric based GPU. So that's a lot of world first coming out of AMD. They should be launching sometime soon. So they're showing that it has a die size that's only 331 millimeters squared but competes with the RTX 2080 Ti as far as teraflops performance, coming in at 14.7 teraflops of floating point 32 performance. If we take a look at what the 2080 Ti brings to the table, then we have 13.4 teraflops of floating point 32 performance. So Vega 7 nanometers better than Nvidia's current offerings based on pure teraflop performance. However, as we all know, that doesn't really mean anything. Just because it has more teraflops doesn't mean that it's a better card because this is the best headline I've seen today. It can't run Crisis. Radeon Instinct M1's MI60 only supports Linux. And then there's also the fact that it doesn't have any display outs. As you can see, it's a triple slot GPU. It's got a lot of cooling on it but it's a Vega 20 die that could potentially do a whole lot of damage. It has 4,096 stream processors, a 4,096-bit HBM2 memory interface, 1800 megahertz of clock speed, one terabyte per second of memory bandwidth, and then 7.4 teraflops of FP64 performance. That is insane. However, it's only currently working on x86, x64 Linux variants right now with no Windows support. But even if you had Windows support, you're not playing any video games because of the lack of display outs. Although I guess if you're ambitious enough, you could probably figure out a way to do it. These are supposed to be launching on November 18th. So AMD is delivering on seven nanometer GPUs this year. So let's go ahead and talk about exactly what that means for consumers like us, because not only is this seven nanometer GPU, which is actually surprisingly more powerful than I was actually expecting. There's also the fact that it does it's, it's running on PCI Express 4.0, and then it also has Infinity Fabric technology for connecting the GPUs together. One of the interesting things about that is it does it through the PCI Express bus instead of through an external connector like NVIDIA does on the NVLink connectors. So you're getting multiple GPU performance without having to buy an extra accessory based on top of that. Unfortunately, the Infinity Fabric workings that we were kind of expecting out of AMD, which would have been on the die and them communicating together like an AMD CPU, doesn't seem to be a reality just yet, but they're talking about having 200 gigabytes per second of peer-to-peer -peer bandwidth on PCI Express over the Infinity Fabric links, which they're talking about even having up to four GPUs in a hive ring configuration in two hives in an eight GPU server, and then you combine all of the HBM2 memory to get a gigantic cluster of GPUs. What this is going to mean for consumers is one, seven nanometers doesn't look too far away from AMD making that for consumers. If they're launching the data center version right now, we could expect to potentially see Navi dropping sometime early next year, maybe more towards the uh to the, the holiday season if if we, we don't want to give AMD the benefit of the doubt here uh, when it comes to their GPUs because they haven't really delivered before. But we could also expect an announcement from them at CES for this to potentially see Navi coming out for the consumer desktop variant as well as potentially for the next gen consoles. It also likely means that we will not be getting Infinity Fabric for GPUs to connect together. And like there was that one rumor that was floating around about how Navi was going to be two dies connected to each other. That doesn't seem like it's going to be a big thing. But the biggest thing that we're getting out of this is that AMD is still delivering on GPUs. They haven't given up on the GPU market. It doesn't seem like this is gonna mean a whole heck of a lot until AMD actually unveils the Navi architecture because Vega has been highly disappointing. And not only that, it seems to be that it was just a uh, not a priority for them. And whether or not Navi 
will have been a priority for them, for them to actually try to take the performance crown from NVIDIA. We're not quite certain that's gonna happen at this point. There's not a whole lot to take out of this besides the fact that we could see Infinity Fabric GPUs come across instead of Crossfire. And then we could see PCI Express 4.0 GPUs on the next gen Navi. That's basically all we have. And then there's obviously the information that the RX 590 should be launching sometime soon within the next couple of weeks. And that would tide them over until the holidays when they actually will announce the new GPUs sometime next year. All of that's speculation at this point, but what do you guys think? What do you think of AMD's new CPUs? What do you think of their new graphics cards? Are you excited for what this is going to mean for the consumer? Are you excited for what this is going to mean for competition? It looks like AMD has Intel's number next year with the CPUs. I don't see Intel really coming back from this. They're still struggling with 10 nanometers. It doesn't look like they're gonna get that out next year. And then AMD is gonna deliver on some really good seven nanometer CPUs. And then the GPUs, I'm not sure that they're necessarily going to be able to compete with NVIDIA, but I wanna hear what you guys think. Anyways, I'm wrapping it up there. Don't forget that you can get our It Just Works shirt at the link in the video description. Limited time only, 12 days remaining. Get that up while you can, especially the hoodie while it's still cold. Pick one up. I'm gonna wrap this, that I'm done. I'm Brett with the UFT Tech Channel. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see your smiling faces again in the next video. Love you too.